Greetings, Game Cola faithful, and welcome to the Game Cola podcast. This is podcast number 165. Are you dead or are you alive? I am your host of Podcast Commander Joseph Martin, joined by. I'm Blue Rider, and I'm going to do an intro joke. I'm the person after Blue Rider, and I'm not going <laughs> to play along with the intro joke. <laughs> wow. Um, my joke is that I am Alex the Jedi, Jedrazak, Jeditor in Chief, and I am alive. See, but Deditor. Oh man, that would be good, right? Yeah, the de- Dedrazak. Yeah, and I'm alive, Deditor right? That would have that, that would have flipped been... it. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. It would have been I'm so sorry. Much... I failed you, Joseph. Yeah, it's too late, though. Ma- sorry. Oh, yeah. Hello, I am Dan the Leaf, and I am a debatably a living being. Debatably. <laughs> it's pretty debatable. So yeah. let's start the debate. Are our you leaves, a living being? <laughs> yeah, are leaves alive? Are leaves alive? If if you were to cut my finger off of my hand, I'm in my human form, just for clarification. <laughs> if you were to cut my finger off of my hand, would you say that my finger is alive? Well, not anymore. Well, exactly. it is alive. The, the cells in it are dying, though. Yeah, well, they're it's rapidly right, like the... becoming dead. So if you're right, but like if a, a tr- <laughs> but a leaf, like no one would question that a leaf removed from a tree is no longer alive. Is that true? Even if I feel like it's debatable, and, and that's why I am <laughs> debatably alive. <laughs> so video games, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You can be dead or alive in video games. In fact, there's a video game by that very name, which I assume uh, specifically <laughs> interrogates that question. That's what it's about. Are yeah. um, leaves so alive gonna... when removed from the tree? Yeah, that's definitely <laughs> what the video game Dead or Alive is about. Uh, po- um, Pokemon Dead and Pokemon Alive? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Blue, I think you missed the memo that we are not talking about Pokemon in this podcast. Well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm the one that said that. That's, that's that was Jedi. Alex the oh, Jedi, 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 Jedi. Yes, no, no worries. Our special guest star. We all sound the that's same crazy. anyway. We have, special we have, guest star. Yeah, we, say, Jedi we, have, put together. we have three Bloody. people who are commonly m- m- mistaken for each other on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so that's... <laughs> Gotta be great audio. <laughs> I'm trying to keep an eye on the little flickering mic. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's talking I'm currently? Also trying yeah. to keep Am an I? eye on I'm making sure that my mic is still recording me. <laughs> yeah. Am I the one? Am I confused for you guys? I can believe it. I mean, it. Like, it, 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 it did literally just yeah. happen. Like, right now. Interesting. It did literally just genuinely happen. That wasn't just for the bit. I truly... <laughs> There, there's been times um i'm trying to remember i think i was <laughs> i think we were live streaming once and james hopped on i was like what nathaniel is here <laughs> 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 for just a second i was confused <laughs> i don't know it, it could possibly be that this speaks less to the uh qualities of our voices and more to the lack of quality of our microphones <laughs> we're our brains yeah. <laughs> anyway, video games. I played one a couple of weeks ago. You did? Yeah. You well, played a video game in between the last time we recorded a podcast and this time we recorded a podcast? Yeah, and th- there's video evidence. Whoa. Oh, right. I was present. How could I forget <laughs> that that was what you were going to talk about? <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, between <laughs> recording the last podcast and recording this podcast, we recorded uh, my... Or is it a Let's Play? Does that count? My playthrough of uh, Super Hydlide. Wow. Yeah, and it was an adventure. Please please keep in the entire from the previous podcast. Yeah, yeah. Please please keep in the entire pause of <laughs> everyone was speechless. <laughs> um, yes. It was a game. Um I mean Blue, I think you saw it. Joe, you uh, were obviously there. Yes, I was present. I'm trying I to remember actually came in about an hour late i think so i did not see that game but i saw the oh. rest of the games and i was oh, you didn't... to go back and watch the rest of it today right okay yeah that's fine um no i guess i was just wondering if anybody had any comments on um was it as confusing as i made it out to be <laughs> uh, i mean it was only less confusing i feel just because you were there to explain it yeah yeah <laughs> um 
yeah, trying to figure out what handle was, what that meant, what it implied, um, like by trial and error, uh, was a good time the first time that I played. Yeah. And then, um, I don't know, I don't know if everybody see, and that's the thing is that, um, whoops, I posted in the chat that somebody had shared a screenshot of the exact moment in which I died in Wanderers from Ease. Um. <laughs> mm. Oh, I didn't quite. I didn't quite put that together. Yeah, okay. that's yeah. that's why I posted. It was one of those, you know, if you know, you know, um, <laughs> and if you don't know, now you know. Yes, I, I then played uh, a few of my favorite classics of the Super Nintendo: um, Wanderers from Ease, Lagoon, um, Soul Blazer. Was that it? I think that was yeah, it. Yeah, I'm not sure. The, honestly, the main thing I remember is that every single one of them had like a cut se- oh, intro yeah, cut yeah, scene yeah. that was like tiny on the screen. Yeah, yeah. Um, except for uh, Soul Blazer, which just had text, which explained that um, King Magrid sold every human life uh, for a gold piece each. <laughs> that he had some business negotiations with Death Toll. <laughs> king of the world of evil um yeah so, so were old rpgs just like the what can, like because i remember when nonsense, i was sort of first yeah. getting into <laughs> well but like when i was first getting into gaming like beyond just i play some video games right but like reading p- other people talking about video games and new video games that were coming out right yeah it's like every video game was like a first person shooter it was just like a generic, like you, like you were either a generic military man doing generic military things, yeah. or you were fighting in a zombie apocalypse. <laughs> and there were just a million games like that. And it's like, is that what like SNES RPGs were like? Kind at the of. Time? <clears throat> and like th- that's the the interesting thing is, um, yeah, you had basically three, maybe four video games. Is um, you had a thing where you jumped around and like collected some kind of object. And like bounced off mm-hmm. of other stuff, right? It's like you've got platformers, then you've got um, shooters, which come in two variety, horizontal and vertical. Usually uh, it's either going to be a guy running around, it's basically Contra, um, or it's going to be a spaceship that's flying around, Gradius or whatever. And then you had RPGs, which were just like hit the A button a whole bunch. Just like if you just keep hitting it, you'll mm-hmm. win eventually. Watch um, the numbers go up. Yeah, and that, um, like, I remember being, like, eight and being like, man, what a great story. Wanders from ease. <laughs> uh, Dogi visits his hometown. You know, and, like, I remember thinking, like, wow, oh, yeah, I remember thinking, like, wow, they should make a movie of Secret of Mana. That would be great. <laughs> you know, like. And then they did. On the Game Call podcast. That's true. Um, we have videos <laughs> of this. Um, and going back and playing all of those games as an adult is like this. Like, you get some of them, like Lufia, right? Where, like, I'm sorry, the story of Lufia is not that deep. It's not that great. It's basically just, if you take a story and then, like, like melt it down a bit, um, you know, water it down, uh, you end up with, like, <laughs> an anime fantasy story right so you take like lord of the rings you water it down and you get like you know slayers or something right which slayers <laughs> is a good show it's funny uh classic whatever um but then let's say that you water that down more right so that there's not as much story it's mostly you just pressing a so that you can fight a uh, a newt or whatever right um, or a different no 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 sorry you're pressing A so you can fight a different colored newt eventually yeah, yeah well no it that does happen um, but n- <laughs> newts newts are one of the first enemies that you fight in uh, Lufia and that basic- in real life <laughs> this is true uh, I I have lived in Florida um, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> and yeah that like if you just like water that down eventually you get to like Lufia and it's just like a a watered down anime fantasy story right um Lufia 2 better game still kind of like maybe more on par with like actually could have been an anime but yeah like the the stories in early RPGs they they, they were barely present right because for 90% of the game you are walking or you are fighting 
So like, as much as they like said in concept that the purpose of the RPG is the story, going back and playing them, I'm not sure if that really was true or accurate. <laughs> I, I I guess like the one of the differences is that like the story was meant to be the motivating factor for yeah. you to continue. Yeah. Or like the like the cuz like in like when you're comparing to other games where it's like a platformer, right? Like yeah. you play the next level because once you beat a level, like that you are given the next level yeah. and like that's that's what you have. Yeah. Whereas like in an RPG, like to a certain extent, there's nothing forcing you to continue going along the story path, yeah. right? So, you know, you could conceivably, if you really enjoyed something like that, just stay in the starting area and beat up the starting monsters over and over and over again forever. And this is what yeah. children do. They, this is how children well, play video games. It's how I played video <laughs> games as a child. You, I wouldn't yeah. leave the starting area. I was living my my own life. I was role playing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I um I, I believe I've told this on the podcast before that I had this intention to get to max level in Seventh Saga in the beginning area because there's like a door that yeah. you have to open and basically the game starts after that point. So I was like, I'm just going to get to max level. And this was like on a real Super Nintendo that I had to like save on and stuff that like after school, I would just come home and I would fight undead and i would slowly level up because it's like hours of doing this every day and then like once a week i would be like oh i'm level 48 now <sighs> and <laughs> i, I, I got to said level it as a child you also included the sigh at the end of it the problem <laughs> is is that um i got to level 50 which for some reason i thought was the max and then I realized that it would let me keep leveling. And then um, I think I gave up. But I <laughs> now at the at the end of the game of Soul Blazer, I did the same thing. And I have a weird VHS tape where I recorded this briefly because I had this sudden realization that like if it gets routed out of the Super Nintendo into the TV, but the VHS has an input, could I record the Super Nintendo? And, like, I, I found out that I could, and sadly I never did anything with this. So, like, this is the only thing that I ever recorded, I believe, is uh, my character Dude Man um, being, like, level 49. Uh, because it did max out at 50 for uh, Soul Blazer, which I found out uh, because I spent, again, uh, hours and hours doing nothing but walking around uh, the world of evil. Um, and just, like, Soul Blazer is weird because the vast majority of enemies... Um, stop spawning after you beat the layer the the monster layer that after you like cap out the number of enemies that it spits out it's done but there are some there's some like rotating block things in the world of evil that give you four thousand each and that yeah i got to max level that way which i will also say um it stops giving you any kind of bonus after a while so there was no purpose in getting to that level it sounds like you definitely played the game as intended. Yeah. Did you have fun? It's a good question. That is a good question. So uh, who else has played a video game? Jenny. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know how long uh, everyone wants to listen to me ramble about the completely <laughs> stupid things I did as a child uh, when... Uh, all that I had was not but the Super Nintendo. Um, <laughs> who else has played a video game? Uh, I Dan, you said you also played a video game and stayed in the starting area. What video game was that? Oh, yeah. So it wasn't. So the game that I played the most and like didn't progress in wasn't. It wasn't technically in the straight up starting area. I'll, I'll give you that. It was Twilight Princess, uh, Legend of Zelda, Twilight Princess, uh, and I would get to when it would let you run through Castletown and Hyrule Meadows, and I would not progress past that. Because at that point, you um, can turn into a wolf at will, and also you have a horse, and you have a field wow. to run through, and a town of people to terrorize or to pretend to shop from <laughs> as human. And, like, the, the, the day-night cycle happens unless you want it to change tonight or something, in which case you have to leave. I don't remember exactly how it works. <laughs> 
There's like mm-hmm. one, oh no, maybe it was that in Hyrule Meadows, the day night cycle happens. And then anywhere else, if it becomes night and you want it to be day again, you have to go back to Hyrule Fields or something like that. That's that's the game that I did that the most in. And then I know that there are others. I I, I know that I was very disappointed at Skyward Sword for not having an area in which you could do that. <laughs> like at all. <laughs> right, because you couldn't just hang out. In the, it wasn't as much fun to just hang out in the sky. Yeah, I guess the sky is probably the closest. But yeah, because that, that was like the biggest open area. Unless you were to mm-hmm. run in circles in that, the like big deep kind of area that, uh, you know, like right when you land where you do the final boss spoilers, where you do that part, <laughs> you can kind of run up and down those, uh, that like spiral staircase. It's not a staircase sl- slant. If you want, I did that. <laughs> Some people might call it a ramp. Some people might call it a ramp. <laughs> might call it a ramp. I did that. <laughs> not us though. No, it's a slant. <laughs> uh and then i i don't think that there's any game out there where you can hop into a spaceship where it's not at least part of the game to just fly around in a spaceship aimlessly for a while yeah kingdom hearts one i know that um i've told this story before as well um that i lent uh final fantasy 3 to a friend of mine and all that he did for like a week was load up my save and fly around in the airship good a good way he to said play. he enjoyed it. I bet yeah. he did. <laughs> he thought um, it was a pretty good I game. I was younger <laughs> and people rented video games. Um, they did what? I'm sorry, <laughs> can you explain this to me? <laughs> okay, so you could go to like an establishment full of DVDs and such. Wait, why are and... you going to somewhere with DVDs? The in- games yeah. come because... from the cloud. The cloud wasn't real yet. Oh, to my knowledge, I I might be wrong on that. But what is what is this bloke booster? No one said it. No one said it. You don't get to make that joke. If no well, we were all it. thinking it. No, we were I, all thinking it. I didn't it. have a blockbuster, so. Uh, well, what did you, yeah? Right in Canada, you had bloke booster. Wait, I had a movie gallery, and I had movie ranch. Oh wow! Did it actually have more O's? Yes. Well. I think I don't know. It had a cow mat or it had a bull mascot, so <laughs> the I'm, yeah. wait, and it, it had... was movie ranch, so I a assume mask? so. Yeah. Mascot. Oh. Yeah. Mascot. Got it. It's, it's that's yeah. a mask you wear around your neck. I yeah. oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah. oh. That was good. Yeah. COVID <laughs> has changed uh, fashion in so many ways. <laughs> <laughs> Bull mascots <laughs> were very in where I was in. You just wore bull horns around your neck, I guess. <laughs> around your neck. <laughs> it Can was we talk interesting about, um, times. I don't know if there's anything to talk about here, but I just want to express because I've been reminded that I, every time I play a video game where it has like, uh, like I'll I'll do World of Warcraft for example. They have the um bull species or whatever they are cow species or whatever they are uh they have the orcs um species like that i despise that every video game decides that like the female version of the character is going to be the small one with no horns and the male version of the character is going to be the one that actually looks cool and like someone you want to play with (laughs) was that always the case because like yeah in, that's weird because even in like nature you have things like anglerfish and stuff where i mm-hmm. think the yeah. male is like ten, yeah. something ridiculous like 10 times smaller yes yeah something a lot of, like that no, yeah it's, the it's a male it's angler a, like, fish is basically a parasite you can find yeah you can find images of this meme like all over where it's like fantasy races and it's like the male version of the fantasy race and like all these wild different things that yes. look you know, very different. And then in like the female version is just the same human woman with yes. like a different yeah. color filter mm-hmm. over and her. And she has boobs and you're like, why? <laughs> She's a lizard. Why? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if it's not a that, mammal. That's also a classic. <laughs> I, I guess I just don't play enough like MMOs. <laughs> I th- but I do think that this this extends past MMOs. Probably, I yeah. I can't but necessarily I, think of an example. I've, only, I've, seen does, it, I've seen, like, Skyrim and stuff, and I don't think that's... Like, Argonians are the same. Khajiit are the same. So, I don't know. I'm, 
I'm sure there are others that I haven't it, played, but yeah. the ones it's, I've played, it's about equal, I think. I'm not against, it's definitely for the worst record, in I'm MMOs. A, a, it is, it is. I'm not against sexual dimorphism in video game characters. I'm against it being boring for one. The, yes, exactly. Boring yeah. for one. It's a good way to put it. <laughs> I, I want to be able cool. to. cool. Pokemon does that, right? Don't they? Usually? They've got. Uh, what, like the difference, like the difference between different gender Pokemon? Yeah, they have some pretty cool ones, don't they? Or am I making that up? <laughs> I'll be honest, I can't think of, I mean, most of them are not very notable that I can really think of off the top of my, I guess, the, yeah, yeah, I don't know, I don't, I don't think it's used very interestingly, but also but, probably not soup like, also not, like, in a, in a bad way, yeah. just, like, a not super interesting way. Cause Which it's is just... also acceptable. Also, like, yeah, a it's... game that, like, knowing the gender of your Pokemon tends to not matter, right? Like, I know there's... I think I, in I the competitive Pokemon, but there's it breeding, does, but... doesn't it? Yes, it does. It does. Well, yeah, but it does for, like... Yeah, because um, I, I think that okay. a lot of Pokemon sexual dimorphism is like, oh, the leaf... uh goes to the left yes. instead of to the right oh sorry not, <laughs> not you but you know that like oh, well so have... yeah like a lot of it is like oh this the, one's alive and horn. this one's dead <laughs> <laughs> they made a whole uh, game about that <laughs> it's, it's usually like that, oh the horn way. is slightly bigger i think there are some bird ones where it's like oh yeah like oh, the, yeah. the male bird is fancier because yeah. no and it's the wrong way. I mean, that one's <laughs> true to nature, isn't it? Birds yeah. usually. Mm. Well, so that one, the, all, not let always. It slide. Not, not always, always, but there are there are. I don't know what they're called, but mm. there are birds where the female sex is more. Yeah. Beautiful. I'm just. I'm just saying <laughs> there, there <Sorry>. is <laughs> a reason for it, and I'm showing your biases. There is a type of bird where I am more attracted to the female bird. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think if I ever played a video game wrong, and I don't think I ever did. I think I've always Joseph? played every video oh, game right, I've ever back played to, perfectly. Interesting, uh, great. <laughs> going to the establishment of DVDs. Oh, yes. Yeah. Rent yeah. them oh, yeah. out and temporarily own them, I suppose, is... An explanation for those who don't know the term renting. Well, I mean, so I've this sold. Like, is this like that uh, that game pass thing I've heard of? Is I that... don't <laughs> know because I haven't used I've... that. Mm. I think we've continued this bit too long, and we should let Blue tell the story. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It is not going to be worth the hype up or the, <laughs> the wait or whatever. So. Oh, I would, my siblings would just, like, delete my save file from games I had rented because I don't really know, because they're older yeah. siblings and people just do that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And so That's I'd reason. often have to get, like, a game multiple times and restart it every time because <laughs> I wanted to finish them, but there were, like, long games, so... It was a bit of an uphill battle. So I, I know the, the first like couple hours of Kingdom Hearts 2 are just burned into my soul, basically. <laughs> <laughs> and the rest of the game is not nearly as ingrained in me, but the first two hours of Kingdom Hearts 2 where you're in Twilight Town and you're running around and doing tasks and the music is the same and it's a great song is it just it lives inside of me forever now do you think it's a great song because you've heard it so many times <laughs> i think usually it works the opposite way where if you hear a song too many times you like it less so i think that there's I like still a, it's like like a it bell curve. so much <laughs> like that, it, you yeah. can it can you can reach a point where it's too much and then it can it can go back to like this weird place in your brain where it's just familiar so your yeah, brain just yeah. likes it because it knows what it is no i'm pretty sure the first time i heard it, it i really liked it i remember the first time as well when i booted it up and you sit on the menu screen of kingdom hearts 2 and it plays like the piano version of 
Dearly Beloved, that was... I remember sitting there and just listening to how pretty the song was before I even got into the game for the first time. So I think it's safe to say that I like Kingdom Hearts music, despite... Or not because I've heard it so many times, but... (laughs) Despite it, hearing it so many times, I also I gotta say the it's first time. It's just like Kingdom Hearts two to have a menu song with a real, just regular song title. <laughs> <laughs> it is like I remember it was so pretty. I, I mean, I was like four, so I was just sitting there listening to the piano music, and I almost cried because it was really pretty. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> My GameCube, we got it, and it we didn't get memory cards, because mm-hmm. we didn't know what memory cards mm-hmm. were at the time. <laughs> yeah. And so I played the first, like, eight levels of Pac-Man World 2 over and over again for probably a solid few months. Was it um That's my related story. Also Super Monkey Ball, we cuz you have to like play the main game to unlock the uh and you like earn points playing the main game to unlock some of the mini games. So if we wanted to play those mini games, we would have to like play I would I learned how to essentially speed run the first <laughs> the 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 easy level section of the game so I could just quickly earn enough points to play one of the mini ga- mini games we wanted to play. <laughs> Does anyone else have any embarrassing stories of things that made them cry in video games? In video games? Yeah. You know, I don't know if a video game has successfully made me cry. I've played video games that are supposed to make me cry. Yeah, I was going to say there's a difference between, like, embarrassing things like something stupid. Um, I'm trying to think if there was. I've definitely, I can't remember what happened because I think my brain's blocked it out, but I know that I have felt deep embarrassment towards my actions in video games (laughs) and not doing it right. (laughs) I don't think I've done that. No, see, I play video games perfectly every single time, so what would I have to be embarrassed about? I'm doing no death, no hit run every single time without (laughs) flaw. Maybe what's embarrassing is that I've never actually beaten Skyward Sword and that the only reason I've seen the end of that game is because Joseph did it for me. <laughs> we No, we played it together. Yeah, but we you beat the together. boss. <laughs> I got after to After we the looked boss. it up. After That's we true. looked it up because that is the one time in the entire video game that Fee, yeah. your little over-descriptive partner who's always like, here's the solution. By the yeah. way, you're about to start this puzzle. Here's the solution to the puzzle. <laughs> it's the one time where Fee decides to be indirect yeah. and says something, oh, we can't do a Skyward yes! Strike here. Yes. And it's she like, says what you're supposed to do it. And then what you're supposed to do is to try to do it anyway, and then it gets hit by lightning instead, and that's how you do it. I mean, does that not sound like something a gamer would do? Hey, you can't do this, and then they try it anyway. Right. Man, but like not in a game where it's been established that, like, this person's going to give you... A very explicit solution to your problem. And suddenly she's talking in circles. And also you the could Skyward say, Strike is mostly useless in the game. Right. <laughs> and also, At least it would combat. not be... Like, I, I feel like in another video game, like, the fact that Fee mentioned the Skyward Strike would be like... Yeah. Be like, oh, why would Fee need to tell me that I can't do a Skyward Strike? Obviously, if I tried to do a Skyward Strike, it just, like, wouldn't work. But, like, it would be totally within character for Fee to be like, hey, by the way, you can't do a Skyward Strike, even though it's incredibly obvious that it wouldn't be possible. Yes. Because I always thought, like, when I remember thinking when we played it that it was like, oh, okay, so something about, like, how we defeat this stage of the boss is going to unlock the ability to do a Skyward Strike yeah. in the next stage of the boss. Yeah. Yeah, it felt like a, she was just telling you, don't waste your time. And mm-hmm. not, like, she was trying to goad you into disobeying her. <laughs> we were very we were very salty about that. Yeah, but <laughs> here's the thing, is that even after we Googled it, I, did, I couldn't do it. And Joseph had to do it. Mm-hmm. So, that's embarrassing. Okay, yeah, I am. Um... We can talk about times video games have lied to our faces. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, um, I remember that I never actually beat Earthbound that I got to the end boss. I was like, man, I must just need to level up or something because I cannot beat this guy. 
and like watching Paul's Let's Play on uh, our our Game Cola YouTube channel at Game Cola slash GC dot net, whichever search term you prefer to search for if you're not already watching this uh, podcast on YouTube. Um, and it's explicitly telling you like, oh yeah, you just need to pray. We need to pray, right? Like it, it hints you at you very, yeah. And like pray, by the way, being the the command that um, the girl character has her special command is pray. And so it's like, I just never did it. You just never <laughs> prayed? I just never selected the, the pray option because it's been completely useless. Like the entire game uh, that like, yes. it, I, it's probably not as useless as I thought. I think it's one of those things where like, if you do it early on in the game, it like heals everybody for five points or something. I'm like, this mm. is, this is not useful. So I just like it's never like, did it through the entire game. And then at the end, they're like, like when you're young or when I was younger, at least, I guess I won't speak for everyone, but in Pokemon, you have the like status moves and the mm-hmm. like defense and attack luring moves. Yeah. And you just immediately replace them with damaging moves as soon yes. as you can and yeah. never go back. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then you're yeah. like, why fair, am I bad though, at Pokemon? I don't understand. <laughs> to be fair though, the they 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 set you up to think that because the ones that they give you at the beginning are pretty much useless. <laughs> because like oh, status, yeah. status yeah. like raising and lowering moves are really only worth it if you can raise or lower like two level either like yeah. raise a stat or lower a stat two levels or raise like two stats because like for example like if you were to say like you've got a move that lowers the defense by half and you've got an attacking move you're going to do more damage just attacking twice yeah 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 mm-hmm. but if you lower the defense and then if you lower the defense by two stages so it's like du- you do double damage then it's like equivalent and then if you yeah. end up still having to do another attack, then it you get a benefit from it. Right. But, like, if you only lower it by one stage, you have to attack, like, quite a few times. I, yeah. I can't do the math in my head right now. Before it actually becomes valuable. Yeah, and when... Though it is funny. Um, In the, one of the legendary Pokemon from uh the last games, Sword and Shield, the, uh, the shield dog, is so bad <laughs> that it can't raise its attack with any move other than howl which is like the move the attack raising move that like the little poochiena dog in the (laughs) very first route of the gen 3 games gets right yeah (laughs) and it's just because it's like well it needs to be it needs to be useful it needs to be able to raise its attack and that's the only move that it gets to do it Mm -hmm. even though there's plenty of moves like swords dance or you know that's the classic one that'll that'll raise your attack by two stages it's a little doofy. That's the only time I've ever seen Howl used in a competitive format. <laughs> yeah. Um, yep. let's see. Okay, video games. Uh, I mean, there there are a few video games that I've stopped playing right before the end boss. Um, I I didn't. I stopped Super Paper Mario right before the end boss because we were renting huh. it, like that mm. ancient witchcraft that uh, Blue was describing. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it, but I I the reason I stopped at the time was because like. I think the final boss has, like, multiple stages, and it got to, like, another, another uh, final stage, and I was like, I'm done. I'm mm. not doing this anymore. <laughs> um, the other one was uh, Link to the Past, because I got to the final boss, and then it was like, oh, whoops, you didn't get, you didn't go find the item that you need mm. to defeat this boss, but you have to defeat the first phase of the boss before it'll tell you that you don't have the item yeah. that yeah. lets you actually win the game. And I was like, no, okay, mm. this game has been... I I still feel that like Link to the Past is still in that area of like being obtuse. Yeah. The games were because it's you could get features and strategy guides mm-hmm. if you made your game obtuse yeah. to to try to follow, and it wasn't like actually good game design. And I'm sure it's fun <laughs> if you know what you're doing, but there were just too many times where it wasn't clear. And yeah, I'll talk about it more, but I've been playing Link's Awakening and it's like Link's Awakening is much more straightforward than Link to the Past, which seems weird to me. You think they would have gotten better about it instead of worse. No, that's well, not how progress works. Well, Link's uh, Awakening one... came out it... later. Hmm? Did it? Yeah. The Game Boy one? Yeah. Like, I thought, mm, Link, yeah. Link's Awakening was like uh, 
mid nineties and um Link to the Past was like uh one of the first games on the console. Okay. Oh I, I always thought that the I'm doing the math in my brain. I guess because it was a really late Game Boy game. Yeah. Yeah. But even um well wow, I guess okay, I guess I remember it mostly from the DX version. Let me go look up. Um Right, that's what I was thinking. I thought that there was a non DX version that came out first. It definitely didn't come out first. Game Boy Color. Um, let me let me go look it up. Hold on. Um well, yeah, I know that the DX version did not come out first. Really? Let's see. Um, 1993, Link's Awakening. That's a lot earlier than I thought it was, though. But um, 93? Yeah, that's that's pre-Leaf. Because um, the other one was 91, which was basically when the... Um, like, not exactly when the Super Nintendo came out, but um, I guess in 92 in uh, North America. But yeah, that um, Link's Awakening came out after Link to the Past. Okay. Well, then that makes more sense then, because it definitely feels like I'm recontextualizing yeah. some things in my brain. It definitely feels like they they kind of learned from yeah. being obtuse. <laughs> like, especially like, uh, again, we could talk about more when games we've been playing in recent times, but like they put like a hint system that's just like built into the game. Oh, yeah. And like it's it's not like accessible all the time, but it's like pretty accessible. Like it's not just you have to go to one place. Like, yeah. They yeah. scatter it around the world. So, like, that's nice, too. Like, sometimes they're like, you can just check in and be like, because sometimes it tells you to do something, and then it's like, well, you're actually supposed to do something else before you do that thing. <laughs> <laughs> and the the guy on the telephone that you can ring up for the hint system will be like, oh, you should run by this place. It's like, okay, cool. Now I don't have to walk all the way to this area and find out that I can't do the thing. Yeah. And then walk all the way back to where I was actually supposed to go. Yeah. Um, I mean, there would be, like... There would definitely be precedent, modern precedent, uh, for Zelda games to get worse instead of better. Specifically, like, going from Twilight Princess to Skyward Sword. And I, I know that they were just trying to you kind of, like, iron out a lot of bugs that they had with Twilight Princess, but they just ended up making a bad game, <laughs> in my opinion. Or at least a, a not as good game. But then they figured it out for Breath of the Wild. Like, they... They, they got a handle on it. But, I mean, I can see how, like, they would take, like, in Twilight Princess, the hint system was exclusively through Midna, if I remember correctly. And nothing she ever had to say was helpful at any point. And then in Skyward Sword, you had Fee, who was obnoxious as hell. And then, um, I don't know if you remember this, Joe, but there was a, a like, rock near the training area in the town that gives you hints, like, video hints. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they introduce him to you at the beginning of the game when you do not need hints. And by the time you, like, could use his help, you definitely don't remember that he's there. <laughs> because he's in a part of the game that you don't go to at all past the beginning. You go to the training area to learn how to, uh, to learn how ineffectively the Wiimote is able to track your movement. <laughs> and then you never go back. <laughs> Unless you need hints later on in the game. So... And then they made the game stupid linear. I don't know what feedback they could have taken from Twilight Princess that would tell them they needed to make the game so linear. <laughs> like Twilight Princess was linear, but at least there was a middle area you could run around in. I guess Skyward Sword has that technically with the town. It's just, it's not the same. They also gave you a Yeah, bird it's more of a of hub. Course. Yeah, yeah. Right, like there's a difference between like a hub that you return to and like an interconnecting space. Yes. Like, like you have in Twilight Princess and in like Ocarina of Time. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Ocarina of Time does have it too. I haven't finished that game, but I have played a decent portion of the beginning of it in the vein of games that we haven't finished, <laughs> but should have. <laughs> I, uh, some of you may know have been sick lately and I'm not anymore. Hooray. But while I was, uh, recovering, I was playing Outer Wilds, not for the first time, uh, but I was finishing Echoes of the Eye, which is the DLC for Outer Wilds. That was for the first time. It was very, very good. Uh, but I decided after finishing Echoes of the Eye that I wanted to replay Outer Wilds, and I have since played all of Outer Wilds up until the very end. And I'm, I just don't, I, I, wa I should do it just out of principle. Like, I know exactly what I need to do. I just don't want to. I've tried three times and I failed three times and I just don't want to, you know, 
it's a bit of a problem. Because also the reason that I wanted to do this was because I I read that if you finish Echoes of the Eye, you get a slightly different ending if you refinish the uh, original. So I want to get that without Googling it. We'll see. It's been hmm. over a week, which usually means my brain's just going to give up on it and I'll just never do it. Uh, Man. Are there any games anyone's looking forward to? No. Oh, okay. Uh, I was I... looking forward to Potion Craft coming out. And I think, and is it 1.0 or something? I don't know. They just, they released an update. I've played a decent bit of it. But I'm not looking forward to it anymore because it, it already happened, you know? It's kind of I recently put an article in the Discord about, like, five Steam games you may have missed this week. And it was a couple weeks ago, I think. I'm not sure. Um, but one of them was Corpse Keeper. And that's in early access, so uh, it technically counts because it's not fully out yet. So, uh-huh. yep, that counts. Work around. So it it looks really interesting. It is it's like a side scroller, and but uh, you you walk to the right, and then <laughs> you an enemy will drop down from the sky. And then it turns into a fighting game, a 2D fighting game with, like, the strategy and, like, combat, sort of, of Dark Souls. And then after you beat that opponent, you keep walking right and it happens again. And so it's like a roguelite action RPG fighting game where you... It's really cool and you have, like, a cast of... A, like dozens of corpse people things i don't know what they're called in game <laughs> um but basically your your fighters degrade over time so you can't just keep with your favorite fighter you can't take the meta yeah. pick and just yeah. beat the game you you're at the, the there's like an active fundamental element that discourages meta in a fighting game and that nice. is the thing I liked. I'm a filthy casual in everything. <laughs> I play a lot of things that are competitive, but I refuse to do the competitive version. <laughs> like, I play Yu-Gi-Oh! and stuff. Uh, what else is there? I don't know. Fighting games. I I like playing them, but I like playing them the fun way to me. So so poorly? Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Well, I mean, <laughs> I in Yu-Gi-Oh, I have, like, I like elemental heroes, and they've never been very good. Yeah. So they're, like... Oh, I feel you there. It's, it's hard. <laughs> like, I feel yeah. like it, there's definitely kind of a... I don't know what the word is, but, like, a, a discrepancy with video games of, like, people that want to play to the meta. Like, they want that. They want to be overpowered. And then people who want to just play the elemental deck because it has the prettiest art you know yeah and they're, like they're my favorite characters they're the superhero ones so yeah or, how do i not like them right so or like, I, like the descriptions or whatever i like, always that's why the marvel snap games like that where it's most fun at the beginning i've stopped playing it because now everyone's playing the meta decks i wish that more games had you, you could play competitively but there wasn't a meta and i know that that is yeah. hard because meta inherently happens right so this game is like sort of removing that i don't think it's like pvp so that is unfortunate but it is a step in a direction i thought would never happen and so that's really exciting for me, and I hope that somehow, someday, I can play a game I love, like, competitively-ish, but without it being so narrow, I guess. I hope that for you, too. I do feel like roguelikes probably get the closest of consistently being able to provide that experience of, like, you don't necessarily play the meta, but that tends to it depends on the roguelike but it, i think it kind of depends to like on if 
it's randomly generating your options or not. Yeah. And then like some games like Slay the Spire, I've played quite a lot of. So I I do think that you probably have to play quite a lot before getting to this point. But like eventually you grow to understand what combination of cards work better. And you enter this place where certain playthroughs are just frustrating because you're not getting good RNG. And so you know you're not going to be able to build a good deck. Yeah. Like I think that's kind of the pitfall that roguelikes fall into. But otherwise they do better at... Um, yeah. avoiding that problem. it is interesting too that the way you pl- uh, i don't know about slay the spire i haven't played it yet um i'm really looking forward to it but um <laughs> games like hades where yeah. people play differently so yeah. Yeah. my meta of hades my best build is going to be different than someone else's and i think yeah. that's cool it can be there definitely is meta in hades but there's, yeah, I'm, I'm I think, sure a, there is. a larger, like, variety of options. To, I think that, like, my it. version, though, would be different than someone's, because I play a lot of games differently than most yeah. people. I think most people in Hades, the meta is something to do with, like, a shield throw. Oh, okay, <laughs> then I guess I'm not that different in Hades. Yeah, shock surprise. I mean, that's the thing with meta is, like, you're probably going to end up doing it. But but that's also one of the things, right, that video games have to be careful of, and I think Hades does well, is the meta needs to be fun. Mm-hmm. It can't I know my roommate, like... uh, he was he started playing Hades again recently, um, and he picked the uh, gloves up for the first time and was like, oh, mm-hmm. this is going to be terrible, and now they're his best weapon, even though he was doing the shield previously. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I think, though, like, the meta, like, part of the things is, like, different metas establish themselves based on what your goal is, Mm -hmm. right? Because the whole idea of meta is that, like, it's beyond the game, right? Like, it's not, like, Hades, the the game is eventually finish the game, right? (laughs) Um, That's most games. (laughs) Yeah. Sure, but what I'm saying is, like, this is a very broad statement. I'm just using (laughs) Hades as an example, but, like, you could say, like, oh, well, the metagame is I want to finish the game, like, quickly, right? Mm-hmm. Or I want to finish the game with, like, maybe like Without maybe one person is damage. like, I'm okay losing over mm-hmm. and over again and eventually getting a good run. Whereas someone's like, yeah. I want to maximize how far I get through each run. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, like, there's different ways of playing that lends itself. So, like, you could have, like, an optimal way to play that you can sort of balance that out by making, well, that optimal way to play is very time consuming. So maybe you won't technically lose as often, but it may be faster to, you know, give yourself, let yourself stay in a more risky area. Right. Like, especially with like RPGs, right? Like the optimal way to play could conceivably be uh, the way that uh, Jetty uh, pioneered in his youth, where you level <laughs> up yourself to like as max level as you can in the starting area, and then try to play the video game. Yeah, but that's not what most people do, right? Even though that's the optimal way you could say if you want to ah! minimize the chance that you would <laughs> minimize the chance that you would die, right? <laughs> but if you want to get through the game fast, then that is not the fastest or way have to do fun. It. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, well. <laughs> but I, I think that's another thing that potentially roguelikes do really well in this regard is like, until you have played them a bunch of times, it is almost always going to be in your best interest to just stick with whatever garbage they RNG for you and mm. learn the bosses or the fights, right? Like, so you know better going into it what to expect. So you don't have to worry too much about the like, rng aspect of what weapons you're going to be using and just focus on knowing the patterns right yeah it is weird that uh the shield throw is more common than i thought because i love in video games when you get an attack that bounces between enemies but usually they're not the most effective Yeah. yeah but i i like pick them a lot anyway so that is interesting to me (laughs) Well, that's just... Uh, have you played um, Vampire Survivors? I have not. I don't think that one's going to be for me, really. I didn't think it was going to be for me. I, I say give it a give it a try. It's, it, it is free, right? A little bit. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I guess we'll Isn't give it? it a shot. 
I think so. Give it, play a little bit of it. Don't like give up on it immediately because you do have to, there is some level of like powering up you have to do. Yeah. But then once you get like kind of a handle on the different weapons, it is a very fun game and you get a whole lot of that things bouncing between enemies action. (laughs) Ooh. Okay. A whole lot Um, of that. Yeah. I'm gonna, I guess I'll try that out. Speaking of video games. We're talking about video games? I meant real vampire survivor. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> I was talking about it... surviving as a vampire. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sucks. I meant surviving against vampires. So. Oh, Uh-oh. No. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Game Cola Civil War. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start throwing stakes at, or no, Blue Rider's going to start throwing stakes at me and they're just going to bounce all over the place. Uh-oh. Has anybody played a video game in recent times? Did nope. you hear me? I was sick and I played one. Outer Wilds and I didn't finish it. <laughs> <laughs> Has anyone played a video game that they haven't talked about yet? Yes. But I've also Would played you like that's it. That's it. End of the story. <laughs> oh, see you guys yes, later. Yes, he, he, he hasn't talked about it and he's not going to. Uh, <laughs> Ow. <laughs> Oh, my body's attacking me. Oh, oh no. <laughs> it's me from a distance. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, uh, first, um, there is Midnight Suns. I finished story mode, finally. I cannot believe took... that that's the title of a game. It, that... Mar- Marvel Midnight Suns? Yes, because that's the title of the Twilight from Edward's perspective. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, it is... Oh, it is S-U-N-S. In the comics, it's yeah. S-O-N-S. <clears throat> so, it, you, it would have not been... What is it in Twilight? It's, it's Midnight Sun, S-U-N, but singular. Yeah. So it is a little different, but every time I If they had it, kept the convention of. of the original, it would have been different. Yeah. And that would have been different. But if they didn't. I bet they were trying to get... On, in on that, that Twilight fandom action, you know? Uh, I just thought it was more gender neutral, but uh, you sure? <laughs> <laughs> um, so the I finished that after about a hundred hours, and it was worth my time, and I even played it after that. Also, there's DLC. I haven't played the Venom DLC. That's the second DLC. But I did play the Deadpool DLC. And it introduced new enemies and stuff, and that was that was fun. The last story mission does some fun stuff, and it was worth it. And I will be playing it more in the future. Um, cool. The other game I've played, which I haven't talked about yet, because I only started it after the last episode, um, I've been playing Paradise Killer, which is... Well, it's supposed to be a detective game. So far, it is 99% 3D platformer collectathon and 1% visual novel. <laughs> well, <laughs> how many how many paradises has your detective killed? One, I think. Oh. One out of 24. <laughs> so, uh, so you're actually supposed to figure out who killed, um, basically, the government. There was a mass murder. <laughs> who uh, killed the government? Who killed the government? Yeah. So uh, well, there's yeah. the council, and they run... It's a very weird game. It It's very... You know when... Do you have this where you just boot up a game, and you start playing it, and you're like, I like this game's style. It oozes style. Games like Persona 5 do that for me. And this is one of those games, and it is... It's out there and weird, and it doesn't... It's either, like, follow me or stay here and die, I guess. (laughs) It it doesn't care whether you understand it. It is... Uh. It is doing its own things, and you can invest in it if you want or you can be lost and give up and i there i do think there is a tendency of writers to over explain everything and so i it i think of it as smart writing when they do let you figure things out with context 
And so this is one of those games, and it is great. So uh, it's hard to explain the story, but basically you're the detective of the government who are worshippers of gods, and they are trying to make the perfect island to live in, and the one you're on, which is the 24th, is... It's dying due to demonic interference, and so they're (laughs) destroying it and making a new one and moving to that new one. And on the day that they were supposed to move to, that everyone's supposed to move to the new island called Perfect 25, every member of the council that was um, doing, like, the ritual was murdered, and you have to go around and solve it. And you play as a detective that was previously banished for being um, corrupted by a, like an evil god and tried to bring about the end of everyone. And that's basically the gist of it. That seems reasonable, right? Like, <laughs> if I tried to make the apocalypse happen, I would understand <laughs> if people didn't want me hanging around. <laughs> I mean, the, the you were a victim of like, evil god possession, and you were freed of it, and so now you're all good. Oh, okay. I thought... Uh, so I didn't realize it was, like, full-on possession. I thought there was just, like, an evil god who was like, hey, you want to cause the apocalypse? And you're like, that sounds I mean, from mean. what I've <laughs> gathered in the game, it does, it does start as subtle manipulation, but eventually, yeah, it is basically not... Anything you do isn't really your will. It's a, How convenient... <laughs> That is um, how the game has explained it to me so far. Do you have um, more to say about that game? Or, or it is very oh, it is very hard to know when you've collected everything because I I have unlocked the power where you can meditate and see uh, basically a bunch of hearts in the distance everywhere that there's something to pick up. There's a heart, and so you go around the island and pick everything up. And, but the problem is that every save station, there's save station slash travel points all across the island, and they show up as hearts, and so Uh. now I just see a bunch of hearts, and I am like, I don't know if I should run over there, because that looks like it's probably a save station, but also it might not be, so it's a bit- So they just need to mark it different, really. I, Yeah. That would have been nice. But it also I, feels like it'd be frustrating to, like, need to find a save station and instead you find a collectible. Yeah. So I am now finally talking to everyone. I wanted to collect all the evidence I could before... I mean, I talked to a few people and got some stuff. One of the problems, though, is that people will just... Like, you'll ask them, hey, do you know anything about this? And they'll be like, no, go ask someone else. And it's like a list of things that you ask. Like, you, there's a bunch of topics, and you click on the topic, and there'll be, like, one or two or three more direct questions. And most of it's just a waste of time, because they'll lie and be like, nope, don't know anything. Or they'll be like, "Uh, go ask someone else, that's not my job. And it's realistic, Mm -hmm. but it's... Uh, kind of annoying. And I've heard that one of the big th- reasons the game got a bunch of love was for you You don't have to find out the truth. You can go to trial and just blame anyone and the game I hear will end and you can do anything you want to anyone, basically. You can put the complete wrong person in jail because you don't like them. Huh, just like real life. <laughs> I, so I haven't played. <laughs> Ouch. Um, so I haven't played through the trial yet because I wanted the true ending, even though every source says it doesn't exist. And so I, I'm not. I'm not really one for 3D platformer collectathons, and I'm. Not sure I'm going to enjoy the ending, but I hope I do, because it sounds good and it's a very stylish game, but I might end up disappointed. 
And that is sad because I want to like it so much. I'm sorry for you. <laughs> well, I, I'm not. I haven't been disappointed yet. Oh, <laughs> well, I'm I'm preemptively sorry for you. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> Anytime. Uh, have Have y'all played and or have been watching the uh, Last of Us TV show? Not playing I've the TV played show the game. <laughs> I've not been watching the TV show now. Okay. Blue, you've, you've played but not watched? I've played the game, yeah. I haven't played the second one. Okay. The TV show has been getting very good reviews. I've I've been watching the show. I haven't played the game, but uh, my partner is... He has played the game, and he's been playing through it as they've been mm. releasing the TV episodes. And, right. you know, typically if you are... You wouldn't be able to, like, play along with the TV show. <laughs> but Last of Us really has just has just adapted the game. Like, they've yeah. added stuff. They've added content. They've uh, racially diversified the cast. They have um, added... Uh, Make it sound like a business portfolio. Look, man, <laughs> it is. <laughs> it, it does... That they sounds added great. Disabilities. usually they just... <laughs> They they don't they don't care. <laughs> well, they, that's Evil. true. Usually they don't they don't care, but like this they they did, and it's been nice. And they've made it's very interesting. Like to and I'm sure this isn't the experience that most people have been having, but since we've been watching the episodes as they come out, and then my partner has been playing them in the game, we mm-hmm. get to very explicitly see the like little things that they've chosen to change. Yeah, and pretty much every time I'm like, that was a good choice. Like, they, they made oh, a teeny awesome. tiny tweak that I feel like really kind of brought it up to modern standards. And I and hear it is outperforming, like, the House of Dragons or whatever it is. Yeah. And so I'm hoping that this will finally teach companies that doing, an, a, like, a good job of adapting a video game is actually profitable and you should do that. Well, you would think so. I, I mean, I hope that, but, like, also at the same time, they are really leaning on the fact that last of us already had a really good story that is true yeah i'm worried that what they will take away is ah people like like people didn't like video game movies before Mm -hmm. but now they do Mm -hmm. and so we can make a video game movie and it's like no 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 we liked it because they did a good job (laughs) it's like no 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 we could just we could just put the like oh yeah hey look it's uh uh it's i don't know what's a video game mario (laughs) well they're already doing that yeah (laughs) i mean another one that they're already doing a tv show not movie but witcher right that tv show um netflix i think is what it came out on uh but it first season at least was really good i think the second season also got reviewed pretty well and then i think the main actor just pulled out or something like uh, that it's oh i can it's a whole thing i i can't even because it was superman right yeah yeah but they they but he didn't (laughs) that's why blue knows about it quit because he's superman he quit because if and blue if you know more about this please yeah break it yeah Um, he's a huge nerd he yeah he does Warhammer and video games and everything, and I think he read the books The Witcher is based on, didn't yeah. he? Yeah. And he really is a huge fan of those. I think he read the books and played the games, and yeah. like, is genuinely. I think a he mega fan. even read the books first. I think. Probably. And, yeah, and so he's a big fan of that, and apparently this show is not to his tastes for its choices on changing it, unlike right. The Last of Us. Right. Like, well, the, the first season, I don't think they had this issue, and I think they let him really uh-huh. give his opinion. And, and then, then they were Netflix, and they were like, let's make yeah. bad decisions that yeah. everyone will hate. <laughs> they were like, we're Netflix, and this is season three, so we all know this is going to be the last one, so we might as well just throw it in the dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> but that, I, 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 I bring Witcher up because I think it's an example of a... a TV series that at least for a little bit was genuinely very good and didn't follow the exact story of the video game. It, it my understanding is took quite a few liberties, not necessarily mm-hmm. like at least at first in a bad way. They did try to stay kind of true to the characters, but telling the story in a way that would make more sense for a TV show. Whereas last mm-hmm. of us, I don't think needed the same level of rearrangement. It is very interesting 
watching the TV show because, like, I kind of try to guess, like, if this were the video game or when this is when we play through mm. the video game portion, at what point are there just long stretches of you fighting things that they just cut yeah. out in the TV show? Because that right. is boring. <laughs> One thing that is interesting about Last of Us TV show versus video game is that the video game is relatively gory. It's not like, you know, Doom or anything, but it is gory and the TV right. show isn't like at all. And that's oh. kind of weird. It, it is, seems like a strange choice. And is that, does that take anything away from it? I don't know how, like, there's there's a decent amount of combat in The Last of Us. And... Yeah, I mean, The Last of Us is... It's a relatively brutal story. It's the apocalypse. It's not a zombie apocalypse, but that's kind of the easiest way to explain it. Mm-hmm. It And they just... You know, I, I do feel like you kind of lose some of the stakes when you lose some of that brutality. Mm-hmm. I don't know for... I, I, I'm not, like, super attached to brutality in TV shows. My partner feels more strongly about it than I do. But they definitely have re- reduced the volume of it, which I just I just think is weird. Mm-hmm. But it's good. It's a good show, and you should watch it, especially if you played the game. Okay, I was going to anyways, but I'm glad to have your endorsement. Yeah, episode three made the world catch fire, so you'll have to watch that so you can mm-hmm. catch up. I also wish to be caught on fire. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Joes, have you played any video games recently? I've played a couple. I started a few and have been playing through one. Uh, so the Nintendo Switch Online uh, put up a bunch. Uh, if you already have the basic account, you get a bunch of new Game Boy games. And by a bunch, I mean like eight, six, something like that. <laughs> and then there's also if you have the one where you pay like an extra $35 a month, or I think it might even be more than that. It's a lot of money. Uh, you get the the Game Boy Advance games, most of which I already have in some form. Um, but so I tried sampling some of them. Um, I started with Mario La- Super Mario Land Two. It was all the right, six golden coins. but it didn't. Yeah, the six golden coins. It didn't really hook me. You, I mean, you can definitely tell that it's it's struggling to have like the the level of action and nice control of Mario games. Like the momentum is just really weird. And it's, it's kind of jittery, but there's, like, clearly a lot of creativity in it. It just didn't hook me. Yeah. Um, I tried playing Wario Land 3, and it was just <laughs> in, incomprehensible. <laughs> I know, I, like, I would beat levels, and I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. What's the goal? And it's funny, because I played Wario Land 4, and I enjoyed it quite a bit. But I just can't tell what's going on in this <laughs> game. <laughs> like, I don't know where I'm supposed to go, what I'm supposed to be doing what what like you know i'm collecting these things and it's like is this a good thing to be do i need to like look for things to collect or am i supposed to go through the game and come back like i have just no idea what's going on um so that didn't stick with me but then i started playing link's awakening and i have actually been very much enjoying that i'm about halfway through the game i like just where i last saved i had just gotten into the fifth dungeon out of i assume eight based on the shape of the uh, <laughs> the uh, instruments that I have collected when I walk up to the wind fish egg and it sh- goes in a pattern around when you try to play it. And it's yeah. like, hmm, well, if I count out the spacing here, it looks <laughs> like there's about eight spaces. Yeah. So, yeah, but I've been I, – I've enjoyed it. I talked a bit about how the, the hint – I've only had to kind of look up something once. And it was when I knew what I was supposed to do, but the game had decided that I didn't know what I was supposed to do. And so I had to help an unrelated <laughs> yeah. side quest. And then a character told it was a Jay, I don't Have you played Link's Awakening. Yeah, but not in a long time. Well, OK, well, I like there's a bear who wants a honeycomb. Yeah. And I was like, there's a walrus that's asleep. And everyone in the town is saying, oh, yeah, we all love Marin's uh, singing. It's like, oh, okay, well, maybe I need to play Marin's song or get Marin to come over here. And neither of those things worked. And then I go to give them like, okay, well, there's this bear that needs a honeycomb. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was funny too, because I looked it up. It's like, oh yeah, you can go get Marin from the beach. It's like, well, Marin is not at the beach. Yeah, yeah. And it's because the bear has to get his honeycomb and tell you, oh, maybe you should get Marin to wake mm-hmm. up the walrus. Yeah. Oh yeah, I hate and, that. And then it's like, oh, then you can go to the beach and pick up Marin. Um, so that was the only time I had to look something up. 
Because the hint guy was also not helpful. He was like, you need to wake up the walrus to go to the desert. And he's like, I know I need to wake up the walrus to go to the desert. I know what I need to do to wake up the yeah, walrus yeah. to go to the desert. But I haven't been explicitly told. I've only been implicitly told. Right. And you yeah. need so to be that's... explicitly told. Yeah. You don't get to just so that's... think you know what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. It makes me remember that, like, especially when it comes to earlier games, like, it really, there are lots of overlap with, like, games like zelda like link's awakening or link to the past and adventure games yeah i was like, just thinking that, about that felt like a very adventure game like classic like text like based adventure game like uh was... monkey island or something well not I, I don't think monkey island does this but like yeah. in that games like monkey island that are bad where it's like oh yeah you know how to solve a problem but you haven't been told how to solve the problem mm -hmm. so it doesn't work yet well i feel like that happens a lot to me when i play phoenix right that it's like i can see what <laughs> needs to be done i can see that this is the lie right that they're yeah. lying and i need to point them on this part but like i have to get three steps further before i'm allowed to point out that that was a lie and it's like <sighs> yeah and like in tv shows that's called or or books or whatever it's dramatic irony right <laughs> and it's different because you don't actually have control of the plot but then in right video games, yeah 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 knowing what's gonna yeah. happen and just not being able to do anything is just frustrating yeah just like real but life. that's only happened once most of the other time it's been like fairly straightforward and like there's still there's still like enough room for you to like figure things out um but like you're not like because especially like when you've got like a big essentially open world that like gradually gets bigger as you get more tools to navigate it um is like not knowing where you're supposed to be for example because it does take a while to walk around and there yeah. is some ability to kind of navigate the world but really only once you get into like the mid game and even then at least at the stage i'm at it's still pretty limited like you can only kind of go to certain areas quickly like, you basically have to travel to warp points, and then you can go to another set of warp points. Mm -hmm. That's where I'm yeah. at right now. And yeah. I think maybe, I know in later games, you can use the ocarina to go to, to travel around fast, quickly, and maybe that's something that unlocks later. I don't know. But, yeah, that's just, if you're going to make it take so long to get around, I need to know where I'm supposed to be. Yeah, because otherwise it's it's just frustrating. Like, sure, I can go and just like try all of the stuff like, oh, you know, like with the side quests, right? It's like, well, I could just try to complete all the side quests I can until something unlocks for me. But when all the side quests are in like different areas of the map and it's going to take forever, it's just just tell me where I, where I'm supposed to be. And then I'll figure out like screen by screen, you know, what I need to do, like that kind of level of puzzle. That's fine. And I have like gotten stumped for a little bit and then figured it out. Um, and also I have, I think I have cheated. <laughs> I think I have done, uh, like there's, I think cause it's a Zelda game, right? So there's a hook shot and I can see areas where it's like, this seems clearly set up for a hook shot, but you yeah. have, uh, like the dash boots and the jumping feather. And if you can combine those, you can get, you can get through plenty of places where it seems like you would need a hook shot to be <laughs> able to access them. Um, and that's fun. Like, and you, I, I think. I don't know if it was intentional, but it feels like it could have been something that they knew was possible, but they'll let you do because it's like, yeah. it's not anything game breaking, right? It's like, oh, you can get this piece of heart earlier than maybe it seems like you should be able to. But like, at the end of the day, having one extra quarter of a heart is not going to break the video game, right? right? Um, and, it, and it fills the person with a sense of, I cheated the game, which can be fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's, it's yeah. But one of the things that I really love about Outer Wilds, and I'm sure that there are other games that do this, but is just how you truly can do literally anything at the beginning of the game. Like there is no waiting for you to get a tool to unlock an area. The only thing that stops you from being able to progress is your own understanding of the environment. And you just, you can carry that forward with you. It's a, um, you know, it's a, if you don't know anything about the game, it's, the, the crux of it is that you're stuck in a time loop. So there's a you have a 20 minute ish time loop that you're trapped in and it, it always repeats. And your kind of goal is to really just figure out what's going on. And you travel from you can go from your you, you travel through space, you have a spaceship that you can fly. So like kind of the first challenge of the game is really getting a handle on flying the spaceship 
Uh, and once you've kind of got a handle on that, and again, that's knowledge that you keep in your own brain. It's not knowledge that the game gives you or that you unlock. So then like, you know, when I'm doing my most recent playthrough, I already know how to fly the ship. So I don't have to deal with any of that part of the game. I can just already go everywhere that I need to go because I know how to do it. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I like that. I like, I like that because you can really feel that you are the one that is progressing the story and you are the reason that things are getting easier, not because you have arbitrarily been given the hook shot now. And so now you can access these things that you used to be able to see, but never used to be able to access, which I do think is still fun and very valid in a game. But I just really like this, like, mm-hmm. that you always have the tools at all times. Yeah, because cause there they make the, like, instead of a rock that you can't break being the thing keeping you from going forward, it's the time limit, right? right. And so, like... It can also keep because like one of the things is that if you have a big open world with like no blocks and you can go anywhere, that can be kind of overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And so like one of the things like limiting your tool set and limiting your ability to move around in the world does is that it it helps condense the scope for you. Mm -hmm. Like Breath of the Wild is like that, too. But like in Breath of the Wild, right, like at at the very beginning of the game, you are given a very small scale like scope yeah uh while you open everything up and then even even though you do technically get access to like the full game and you can go anywhere you are still given like sort of soft barriers of like oh yeah the desert is kind of hard to go into without really like understanding the game mechanics so that kind of shuts off that area and then you kind of get like it's very easy for you to get kind of pointed in the area of the what is the the fish area the zora area which is kind of like an easier area compared to the other ones and so like it manages the scope sort of softly in that case because if you just leave it completely open it's very easy to just be like i don't know where i'm going i don't know what i'm doing and if your game doesn't have anything to help you progress then you could just end up frustrated if you don't happen to go to where the interesting stuff is totally and that's one thing that like Outer Wilds I think does very well is it at the beginning you could go anywhere you have the ability to go anywhere it gently guides you towards a planet that's called Giant Steep in part because it's the closest planet so it's just the easiest mm-hmm. to get to and also because like people kind of mention it to you so it's in your brain I'm like that is a good place to start um, but you don't have to start there you you can start anywhere as long as you understand the mechanics and if you don't understand the mechanics you will (laughs) just by playing it breath of the wild i do think does a really good job of of more or less making the game completely accessible to you i think that there's only so much that a game can do without using the time loop mechanic that like outer wilds does you know because you do have to at least with the time loop you can kind of reset the person's progress Whereas, like, otherwise you don't want them to just, like, snowball or something. You do need to have some way of keeping the player from just reaching the boss instantly. Or understanding Mm -hmm. instantly what is needed to be done. So, I don't know. Maybe we'll see, hopefully we'll see, I think, more games kind of like Outer Wilds and Breath of the Wild. uh, Both of which have wild in the name. And I I don't think that's a coincidence. (laughs) Um, Wild, wild. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, people have been trying to do Breath of the Wild for it's quite some time and it, it, it kind of feels like they still haven't really nailed it. Uh, yeah, but I mean, like, I think that we're significantly closer than like we used to be. And yeah, I, we're making progress. I feel like Breath of the Wild making progress. did great things. I think that, Jenny, I don't know if you ever played Sable after we talked about it. Uh, yes, I did. Oh, you yes. did? Okay, now yeah. I want to hear what you thought about it. Yeah. Oh. I, my... Yeah, because you played I Sable was... and then played Breath of the Wild, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was there for the live stream. I'm remembering now. <laughs> yeah, no, um, it, it was my uh game of the year, indie game of the year. It's um, a great game. Multiple. Yeah, no, I really liked it. Thank you. But it does a good job of like, technically, from what I remember, the world is always available to you. You don't gain tools that give you more access to the world. You just gain a better understanding of it and thus are able to navigate it more efficiently. Yeah. I like that a lot. I think that's really great gameplay. I, I like when the 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 learning is on you and not on the game to give you new tools. Mm-hmm. Jetty, do you have anything to say about video games before we wrap up this podcast? 
Uh, I liked Sable. It's a good game. That was a while well, ago. The though. one thing I do know about the uh, Last of Us show is I was reading an article about in one episode they say a place is a place and the internet got upset because they're like, that place is nothing like that at all. <laughs> and I'm just here in Alberta where every time my city is in a show or a movie, it's like just trees or maybe <laughs> if if I'm lucky, one cabin in the woods. And so I'm like, wow, it would be really weird if a show didn't show your home city accurately. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, all those folks in New England and Southern <laughs> California being like, oh my gosh, they didn't, they didn't, they put the corner of 4th and Main oh, yeah. Yeah. doesn't have the stoplight with a little flickering yellow signal. Yeah. Like, oh my gosh, do they even care? <laughs> and meanwhile, like any other place in the country, it's like, there am trees and river. Yep. 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 I know yep. New oh. York is contentious in video games because they're like, oh, this isn't accurate at all. And it's like, yeah. It's, like, it's okay. okay, guys. <laughs> Come I promise down. you it's okay. The video game isn't real life, believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> but the TV show is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Also, like, you know, in, in, in shows like Last of Us, it's a post-apocalypse. Obviously, I don't know exactly what you're talking about, Blue. Like, I haven't heard that criticism of like which. City it, was, it was. Um, there was a time where they said uh, ten miles out of Boston, and it was like <laughs> a field. And that's it's a bit of a stretch. Sure, but it, you know, also <laughs> like it's it's like in the middle of suburbia, basically. But the apocalypse yeah. is ten happens. miles out of so maybe right, but there's not like ruined suburban houses. Well, that's it's just a now. field. They they got eaten. But... Yeah. <laughs> the zombies ate them. They're really hungry. Yeah. There's no one around. All right. Although, thank you for listening. <laughs> oh, Jetty, did you oh, want no, to say no, something I was, about? I was just going to say, you know, having lived ten miles out of Boston, that there was a weird apple orchard like behind the <laughs> mall. <Ooh. laughs> so that's so where like it is. in theory, yeah. the if you, if you spot that one specific area, it is in theory possible. But yes, yeah, sorry, that was all. Well, there you go. There you have it, folks. <laughs> Thank you for listening to this episode of the Game Cola podcast where we help the last of us justify its existence <laughs> outside of Boston. Single handedly. Yeah. Yeah. If you liked what you heard, be sure to follow us on YouTube with Game Cola or GC.net. Both of those should work. The letter G, the letter C, the word that word net. Uh, you can join us on Discord and chat with us, which you can find links to those Discord in the episode description or uh, on our actual internet website, GameCola.net. It's connected to the internet. Uh, it is. Yeah. That was like the main thing we made sure to do with it. Yeah, you can. it's indexed by search <laughs> engines. Wow. Yeah, we get we get plenty of traffic specifically from spiders crawling the web. <laughs> we're <pretty sure. laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, of course, if you want to keep up with us in a social media esque way, we still have Facebook and Twitter. I think theoretically, um, yeah, no one's told us to do any other social medias. But if you have suggestions, Everyone's we are to be open. On TikTok. That's the like. <laughs> I don't know what podcasters I do told... on TikTok, but that that is where if you yeah. ask, where they post am I podcast to be clips. on social media. Thirty well, yeah, second podcast. Welcome to the Game Pro Podcast. Well, that's, I keep telling Jetty to post his uh, to get his uh, clips from the Secret of Mana RPG yeah. class mm. formatted, so we could post them on YouTube Shorts and TikTok. Oh, yeah. And we keep saying like, "Yeah, that'd be a great idea," and then make no progress. Yeah, that'd be a great idea. Realizing that reality, Blue, you say it too. That's a wonderful idea. <laughs> Thank you, Blue. Your enthusiasm is really appreciated. Let's do that immediately, right now. If you want more content like this, make sure to smash that subscribe button. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Break it so that no one else can use, use it. Use a hammer. Yeah. <laughs> We're not responsible for any destroyed computer screens. <laughs> <laughs> and if you want to harass us, you can do so on youtube.com slash the letter G, the letter C, the word dot, the word net. I don't know if that's. Yeah. I'm, is is that, it? Is, is there like a it? slash user yeah. slash? Oh, yeah. No, wait. I don't think you have to do is that. It? I think you can. I don't but I you, mean. I think youtube.com slash. 
Right, works time now. to test a hypothesis. <laughs> There's well, you can you can get to Game Cola's YouTube channel through Game Cola or GC.net now. It should yeah. be set up in such a way that that is possible. But it's time to end the podcast. It is YouTube.com yeah. oh, uh, slash GC.net. That does work. Awesome. Wow. Okay. Cool. Okay. Also, the, we are, we're on iTunes, Spotify, all your favorite podcasting app, probably. Mm. Just find us Search there. Us. If it's the rating, If there's a rating, rate us at the maximum rating. Or don't. If you well, no, do. If you're going to <laughs> read us anything well, worse, then do. reconsider. Yeah, if you want to give us less than five stars, yeah. uh, I think you should reconsider your priorities in life. I think you should re-listen to the episode and kind of like we were yeah. talking about at the beginning of this. Um, if you listen to something enough times, eventually you'll like it. Yeah. And once you yeah. reach that point, please come back and leave us that yeah. five star review. So just listen to this episode until you like it. Mm-hmm. And if you well, die first, I'll be a little sad, but Yeah. Hopefully I'll if come you've resurrect listened you to as a uh, vampire. And Blue will come murder <laughs> you. It'll be great. <laughs> if you've listened to hundred and sixty five episodes of this podcast, hopefully you'll like it by now. And if you haven't, get on that. Also, you should yeah. get some sleep after listening to all those in a row. I think you should listen to them in your sleep. <laughs> oh. Every night. Yeah. For That's the rest of your life. You you really like, what's it called? Subliminal messaging? Does it's like count? affirmation, but it's just game cola as... playing in your ear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Joe's like, please. Please stop. I'm just <laughs> trying to end the podcast. <laughs> I was just curious how long you guys are going to keep going. Well, Anna said we have to go forever. I, that I, is I know what she said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now that's, well, and then that's just completely incomprehensible to anyone listening to the podcast <laughs> now. So thank you. That's the goal, isn't it? I mean, people, they're listening, they're sleeping, Joseph. They can we, guess. Yeah. Thank you for listening to the Game Cola podcast. Have a wonderful time of day wherever it is, whenever it is you are listening to this podcast. Unless you're in Alberta. in your sleep. In which case, you don't exist. You are only tree. Yeah. Yeah, We're 10 miles outside of Boston. And trees, I can vouch for this, can't hear. We'll see you next month. But are they alive or are they dead? (laughs) Goodbye. They're alive. It's a video game. Yay, we broke Joe. Oh, God. What did I do to deserve this? (laughs) Oh, so much. You tried to make a stop. Yeah, (laughs) you thought you had any control. So, I do want to talk about um, immediately before coming on the podcast, I was eating an omelet and um, the cheese. The cheese. Oh, I did also think omelet du fromage <laughs> when they were talking about the subliminal messaging. Oh yeah.